It is day two of Gen Con, and it's a convention. Stronghold Games is here. You know damn well. I'm talking to my pal, Stephen Bonacore. Of course. Good Thank to you see you, Stephen. Yes, it, man. as Great always. You guys. always. Oh, we're not in Florida. Oh, we don't need sunglasses, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Our future is so bright, right? You gotta wear shades, baby. So, it's uh, a new day, as always, so that day. means we got new Stronghold releases. Always have new Stronghold releases. Um, you know, we like to keep keep the gamers fed with right. some new stuff. Uh, we got some really cool stuff. I'm gonna grab this one right back here because it's just so beautiful looking. Amul. Amul, Amul which is with our partnership with Lauta Pellet out in Finland. And Amul is a card drafting game. Okay. And which is a re really cool thing about this. First of all, gorgeous artwork. It's set in like the Spice Road days. Uh, Silk, Silk, Silk Road. Silk Road, that kind of those days, and uh, it's simultaneous card drafting. A really cool thing is that it's three to eight players, and as you add players, you actually add new cards into the deck of the drafting, and they're different than the cards are currently in. So there'll be new combos to see. So people, you're going to see people are going to try to play it with three, and then four, and then five, because because they're going to want to see how it changes the effects of the game as it goes along. Uh, September release, very excited about it. it. Had some nice buzz coming into the show. So. Amul is probably our best seller here or right up there. So that'll be gone by the end of the show. I'm sure you'll be sold out. We'll probably be sold out. We got to fly those in. So you don't. You have to fly in a limited quantity when you do that. Yeah, always. So yeah, Amul going to be great. Check it out in September if you're not here already. Yeah. You see some B-roll so you get a closer look. Yeah, show a closer look. It's because it's gorgeous. The card art is beautiful. You've got some new rolling rights that have arrived. We talked a little bit about these at Origins. Mm -hmm. Let's go kind of recap once again. Okay. To recap, we now... Um, Previously on the Gaming Gang. <laughs> gaming Gang. We, we announced that we were going to be doing six rolling rights uh, this year alone uh, throughout the course of the first, like, nine months. Uh, it started with That's Pretty Clever or Gan Schon Clever, depending on if you know the German name. And then we have Twice as Clever. We're not have... allowed to play either of those games because I'm not clever at all. You're not clever. Not a clever guy. No. Bricks as well by the same designer, Wolfgang Warsch. The guy's just on fire. Second Chance by Uwe Rosen. Berg, which is a flip and right, very similar. Uh, and then the two new releases for this show are Dizzle and Encore. Encore was called Nachmal in Germany. Oh, Encore! Encore, Encore. And uh, that's actually the biggest selling role and right in Germany. And it's by Inca and Marcus Brand, also very famous designers. Designers of Village, for instance. So so that that gives us this whole breadth of role and rights that we did. Um, these are basically almost all without partnership with Schmidt Spiele out in Germany, a very large company out there. They selected us to do these games. Games, and uh, it's going great. And uh, these games are selling crazy. We sold out of the first print run of, of uh, That's Pretty Clever instantly. We sold out of this Twice as Clever instantly. So obviously they're being reprinted. We committed to bigger print runs. So we want to keep these in, in print. Once you buy into the whole way that roll and rights work, what, yeah, roll right, of course, but the whole concept is this visceral kind of feeling. You roll it and you're making marks on your piece of paper and it feels good. You just get, you just want the next, see what the next one's like. And, and they all play completely differently, which is very cool. It's very different experiences and very interesting. And the skill level you required is as low as a children can play second chance, the flip and right game, to twice as clever. You really got to be clever, sharp. really sharp to figure out how to score well. Anybody can play it and not do well, right. but to anybody be, can play any game and not win like this guy. But but if you're really clever, like I can barely score two on, I only play, you know, when I want the thinky thing, I only play twice as clever now because I, I, I can only score like 200 points and I've seen people getting 300, 400 points. I'm like, I got to figure this out. Yeah. So I'm not going to go look at the cheat ways of doing this until I can figure this out. <laughs> Anyway, so that's what we got here. Um, shows me the, uh, the booth is packed as you. Oh yeah, as always. Maybe we do a little bit of B-roll. You can check that out later. I was going to mention um, these. The roll and rights are also kind of themeless too. So they're. We have the abstract roll and rights yeah. exactly because I mean it started you know with uh, with Gan Schon Clever. That's pretty clever. Uh, and the whole series with uh, Schmidt Spiele and and Edition Spiel Visa who did Second Chance with us. The, it's um, they're all themeless basically. Uh, there are themed ones and certainly I'm not. 
against that. I'm a theme kind of guy. But these are, you know, just pure rolling rights. And that which is fine either way. Everybody. They'll just appeal to anybody. Some people are just like, well, I don't want to play a farming theme thing, or I don't want to play. An 18XX. Right. Yeah, yeah, and if you do, we do have steamrollers in our catalog, which is a rolling right, and we do have Legrand. You like that segue, how I did that? Segue into the other rolling rights I had. Even before rolling rights were getting too big, I had them in there. So yes, there's, there's other games other than just the new stuff yeah, at Stronghold. That catalog is good. Right. Did I mention Terraforming Mars? i got to mention that every every episode of everything, right? Love that game. <laughs> I just, that is such a blast. Oh, it just made number three of all time. Now it's ranked number three on BGG. So it knocked Twilight Struggle out? Uh, no, that knocked out a long time ago. That's really? that's down there. That just shows you how often I take a look. Through the ages, just went, you know, we just flip places with them. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's such a great game, and the sales, and the, it's just so wonderful, and it just keeps selling, sells more and more, so all good stuff happening there. One thing I also want to mention is the Origins release you had, Valparaiso, and we're in Indiana, so, no, sorry, it's Chile. Yeah, it's right, a, University of Alpha What a beautiful right? game. Oh, it's gorgeous. The review's coming. It's about two weeks away. But oh, what good. a gorgeous game. I just it, it, love the artwork. And, and it, that's, the and board that's, is very, very distinct. Mm -hmm. That's Michael Menzel. Mm -hmm. Literally the number one. I mean, everybody who sees his artwork uh, just loves it. He's the number one artist in this industry, without a doubt. If you get his art on your cover, it's just going to look stunning. Valparaiso and Forum Trajanum. Yeah. That's the Stefan Fell game we did at the uh, beginning of the year. It's another good one. Oh. Yeah, I reviewed that a heavy, few months ago. Heavy game. Yeah, that's a heavy Euro. Yeah, so, yeah, heavy Euro and Valparaiso is a light, light mid. Wait, Euro, where you're programming your actions with cards, which is kind of cool. You you program them out, and then in turn order, I flip it over, and I move it, a merchant over here. You flip it, you can do some trading and stuff like that. You're building the city of Valparaiso, Chile, not Indiana, uh, and you're trying to Sorry, get Purdue it. fans. Sorry, Purdue. Anyway, so that's what we got, and things are, things are very bright. What's on the horizon? So bright. Anything on the horizon you want to share? Put the shades back on. I did a transition here. You're very, you're not, you're not picking up on the cues as quickly as you should. So like I said, not very clever. <laughs> It's the morning after drinking. All. I mean, uh, it's yeah, just yeah. The, it's the morning. I'm, we I'm, got, I'm slow to get going in the morning. We got a great, yeah, speaking about the mornings, what a transition that he didn't know about this one. We have a solo game, a reprint, but with all new art of a game called Coffee Roaster. Yes, I know about this. Coffee Roaster is a big solo game. It's It's got a lot of meat. It takes about an hour to play that game. Uh, but people just loved it. It came out with kind of let's say, unattractive art originally, but we, we licensed it, we got it back through uh, our partnership with DLP Games out in Germany, did all new art, it I, looks That's amazing. what I was curious about, because I had, all I had seen was the previous artwork, and I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think Steven's probably changing this up. No, now it looks like, like coffee roasting, the the bags are it's there. It's like a bag building game, yeah. right? Yes, exactly. You're trying to like create like the perfect roast. The perfect roast. You gotta get the perfect roast. So any any coffee drinker should check this out, and any solo player, because I mean solo games are just really big right now. Games that can be played solo or just solo games. Collections is very large. Gamers collections. They don't have enough time to play everything. If they can get a solo game to the table once they put the kids to bed or something like that, or their significant other is doing something else, boom, they play a solo game and they'll have a great time coffee roaster coming out october november time frame that's a, that's just a, in time for the holidays we got two we got two freedomans coming out this year only two one of them is called fire it's a retro um, uh, like arcade style uh, also solo or co cooperative two-player game and the really cool one is going to be called fast sloths sloths are the slowest things on earth right they move slow they can't go fast. I'm slower. But you know, but you know how they can go? They can go when the other animals pick them up and move them around. Ah, so so it's a pick me up and deliver me game. Sure. As they as as an elephant will take the sloth onto its back, move it someplace so the sloth can go eat that, and then the and then the uh, alligator might come over and bring him across the water. Adorable artwork. Um, as we don't have to deal with the scorpion and the frog, we're in good shape. Yes. Everything. <laughs> crazy man all right so that's everything that's everything on the horizon cool awesome as always steven it's great to talk with always you. a pleasure my friend and see you guys later
If you're ready for some more fun and you'd like to check out the latest episode of The Daily Dope, my live Monday through Friday show that airs at 7 p.m. Central right here on YouTube, click right here. And if you'd like to roll the dice and push your luck and see a randomly selected video from the channel, click right here. You pays your money, you takes your chances. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer and thank you for watching.